Good morning folks. I'm two days away from starting the hole that will be our heat sink in our geothermal heat sink greenhouse and we're getting ready for them to show up and we've got several little things that we've still got to do and I'm going to go through and show you everything we're doing to get ready. What I've got here is a 55 gallon barrel and this is going to be the manifold for the input or intake side of the heat sink system. We're going to have four feet of gravel, four feet thick of gravel, in an area 19 by 43 feet. And six inches from the bottom, we're going to have ten lengths of the four inch perforated drain tile buried in the rock. And those ten lengths of that four inch pipe are going to run the length of the greenhouse. They're going to come up in one central area and they're going to be inside of this barrel. The barrel is going to be cut off there below that black line and that is going to be the manifold for our heat sink system. Uh, that barrel, will, I'll bury it probably eight inches in the ground so it doesn't leak any air out of the system and on top of it we're going to mount a what is called a can fan. And that can fan is going to be right under the peak of the greenhouse and attached to the top of the peak or not to the peak attached to the top of the can fan is going to be a length of PVC pipe. That PVC pipe is going to go up to within a few inches of the peak of the greenhouse. When the fan is running it's going to draw the hot air off of the peak of the greenhouse. It's going to pull it down through the fan and push it into the manifold. And inside the manifold will be these ten lengths of pipe. The air will be forced down through those ten lengths of pipe and into the heat sink system. Now all of the pipe that is buried in the rock horizontally is going to be perforated. It's got little holes in it for the air to flow through of. So the air is going to come out of those ten lengths of the perforated pipe six inches from the bottom of our four feet thick gravel. The air is going to move up through the gravel and transfer the heat from the air into the rock. Six inches from the top of the gravel we're going to have the second set of ten four inch diameter drain tiles. They are also going to run the length of the hole. The air is going to enter these perforated tiles and then return back up into the greenhouse. The tiles six inches from the bottom and the tiles six inch from the top are not connected in any way. They are two separate systems. Now over the top of the rock we're going to have a barrier fabric so that the soil can't wash down into the rock and plug the system. And then over that barrier fabric is going to be the soil. And the soil all the way around top and bottom are going to make it a closed system so that when the air comes in at the bottom of the rock through that perforated drain tile it will go up through the rock and into the second set and return to the greenhouse. So we're going to be recirculating the air and as that hot air moves through the rock it's going to transfer the heat into the rock and will act as a thermal mass battery and at night when the sun is down, the greenhouse is cooling off, it will work in the opposite manner. It's going to return the heat from the rock back into the greenhouse and the only thing we're going to need to keep the greenhouse warm is enough electricity to run that can fan. We won't have to run any type of propane or natural gas fired heater. We won't have to burn woods. Alright, I've got several other little things I'm going to do and I'm going to move my camera and show you what we've got going on. Good afternoon folks. I'm trying to get ready for this geothermal heat sink build. My excavator guy has been starting in a couple of days but I'm trying to get ready for him to get here. And what I'm out here doing is I'm making, uh, not making, um, well I am making, I've taken a number nine galvanized wire and I'm making bits that I'm going to use to hold the drain tile and the styrofoam in place. And what I've got here is uh, 
this is going to be for the styrofoam. After we get the hole dug where the heat sink is going to be at, uh, it's going to look like a swimming pool that's five and a half feet deep, 19 feet wide, and 33, 43 feet long. Along the vertical surfaces on the outside of that pool is going to be this four inches of styrofoam. And that styrofoam is going to insulate the rock and help it to hold the temperature there. Uh, it's not going to lose any of the heat to the soil on the four sides around it. These pieces are going to go through the styrofoam and into the soil behind it. And it's a heavy clay soil so it ought to hold well or at least it's going to hold it in place until we get the rock in. And when the rock is in it's going to push up against the styrofoam and it will then hold that styrofoam in place. But this is a temporary measure that's going to hold those four foot by eight foot pieces of foam up against the vertical surface of our hole that will be the heat sink. I'm also making these and these guys are going to be used for the drain tap. I'm going to grab a piece of soap. Alright, this is a piece of the 4 inch drain tile that we're going to be using and what this is going to do is it's going to go over it, it's going to go through the 6 inches of rock at the bottom and poke down into the soil and this is going to help to hold this drain tile in place when we're putting the rock over the top of it. After there's several inches of rock on top and on both sides of this drain tile, it's going to stay in place, it's not going to go anywhere and we'll be good to go. Now I'm also going to use these on the sides. They're going to run along the bottom, well not necessarily on the bottom. They're going to run along horizontally inside of our hole in the ground where we're going to put the four feet deep rock. And when we get to the edge it's going to do a gradual 90 and go up the side which will eventually terminate inside the greenhouse. One set of these pipes is going to terminate in the greenhouse and will be used as return air to the greenhouse and the other set is going to be connected in a manifold with a fan on top that's going to force the air through the pipe, through the rock, and back into the greenhouse. Anyway, these are going to go through and hold those pipes against the outside edge of our pit. And they're going to hold these things into place so that once again when we're putting the rock in, they're not going to shift around, they're not going to move. We can get the rock in place and the weight of the rock pressing around it will hold it in place. And need a bunch of them and I've made a little jig here to bend these out and get them a consistent and uniform size in every one of them. Um, I've cut this to an arbitrary length that I've decided on and it, it, the length is not important. What I'll do is I stick the wire in. Yep, making lots of noise. I stick the wire in, bring the edge of it to the end of that PVC. And then just use that PVC and bend a 90. Kind of like so. Now, uh, this piece of PVC, a little more difficult to use, but all I'm going to do is hold it like so, grasp it in my hand, and then I'm going to take that number 9 wire and break it over the end of that PVC. Just press it down. And this doesn't have to be exact, it can be ugly, and these are. It's a temporary fix that I don't have to have eight people down in the hole with me to hold. And again, I'm just making up numbers. So I don't have to have a bunch of people down in the hole with me and holding all this stuff while the rock gets poured into place. And then... Simply find the right length to cut the other leg. Take a set of bolt cutters and cut it. 
Now, you can use just fence, regular fencing pliers with this. However, I'm going to use about 60 of these, and to cut out 60 of these with a pair of fencing pliers, my hands, I, I couldn't do it. These are inexpensive pair of bolt cutters, $20, $25. I forget what I paid for them years ago. They're an 18-inch bolt cutter. It works perfectly well in cutting that galvanized wire. All right, these are the drain tiles that are going to be the return air back into the greenhouse. The perforations are between the ribs that you can see on these things. There are going to be 10 of these 4-inch drain tiles that are going to be buried 6 inches from the top of the 4 feet of gravel. The air is going to go through the rock it's going to come up back into these drain tiles and return into the greenhouse. Now there's also 10 for the supply side or the inlet side and they're going to be six inches from the bottom of the four feet of rock. On the, this end I've got caps on here and that's just where it's going to terminate and these are just there to keep the rock from getting inside of the tube. I don't know that it would be a problem, but I don't want anything in there that's not supposed to be in there, so I'm putting these caps on there. Now, on the other end, and let me pick up and move to the other side and show that to you. Alright, this end is the end that's actually coming back up into the greenhouse. This shorter section between the duct tape and here is a non-perforated tile. The long piece that I just showed you on the other end is perforated and I have a four inch external union here to put the two pieces together and I've just taken some tape and taped it all together so that it does not come apart. When I originally started this I had planned on buying a 90 degree elbow a four inch connector for these drain tile and connect the vertical pipe this section to the horizontal perforated pipe with that 90 degree elbow. But as I got to looking, it actually restricts down to three inches in that elbow. And I don't want to add any restriction to the airflow. So I'm just going to do a, a long gradual uh, sweep with this drain tile and make a 90 for the air to flow through. There are 10 of these laid out next to me here that are for the outlet side and I've got another 10 in another pile that are the inlet side. I need to tape up a couple more, assemble a few more, get all the caps added on there and then this part of it will be done. Uh, I'm not going to go grab the barrier fabric and show that to you. It comes on a 300 foot roll that's six feet wide. It's a three mil barrier and all it does is it prevents the soil from washing down into the rock. If the soil washes into the rock it could plug the whole thing up and then it won't move any air at all. Alright, now my plan for this greenhouse and why we're building this greenhouse is I want the ability to have fresh food grown at our house all year long. I like the idea and that's part of the reason that we're doing this. Uh, primarily this is going to be for us to consume, for us to put away. I've also thought this out and it makes sense to me that if I am the first guy in the county to have for example a tomato. If I can put a fresh tomato on my table mid-April to the 1st of May, I'm going to be the first guy with tomatoes in the county. And being the first one or the last one to have anything that's of demand, you're going to get a better price for it. So after we have this set up and running, I'm going to offer up my tomatoes early or that is the goal anyway, to offer up our tomatoes early for a higher price. When everybody in the county is selling them up at the, the little market in town and the prices are down 99 cents a pound, 
I'm going to get out of the selling market and I'm going to get back into food preservation. I'm going to put it up and put it in my own pantry. In October when our frost hits and everybody's tomatoes are gone and I still have tomatoes that are vine ripened, local, here in the county, I will again offer that stuff for sale. I'm going to be able to fetch a higher price and make a little bit of money to go against the cost of this greenhouse. I don't have any plans to to grow commercially, but if it goes well, who knows, stranger things have happened. But I am going to offset or help to offset the cost of building this greenhouse by selling tomatoes. And if people are interested, I could also sell seedlings in the spring. We're two days away from doing the heat sink portion of this greenhouse build. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so so that you can see all of our new videos when they pop. Uh, no idea how many videos in all there are going to be in this series, but I'm going to try and document and show the whole process along the way. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment and we'll try and get to it.